bottom left hand corner in the stop video, there's a little like upward arrow. If you click on it, if you've updated your, uh, your settings in the middle, yeah. it says choose virtual background. So I can quickly go from Miami beach to San Fran. What? Are you serious? <laughs> if I want, I can go to outer space. <laughs> Which may be good right now. You'd be safe, right? There you go. Northern Lights. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this one's kind of trippy, though. I don't know. Next how week's Zoom this. call, we're going to just learn about all this on next week's Zoom call. I think right. this is the most thing we can learn about in this, this thing. Going there you go. All that right. So, cool. so we're still waiting on Quentin Flores, but we're going to go ahead and get started. He just messaged me and said he's getting his video set up. So is everybody ready to go? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, sir. All right, guys. Well, welcome to this week's uh, Matt webinar about marketing and dispositions during unknown times. Uh, real quickly, I'm going to give a brief intro for all of our panelists. If you don't know who they are, uh, I got to start off with my good buddy, Don Costa out of Fresno, California. He's the host of the Flip Top podcast, and also he's running the Inner Circle Elite Mastermind. Um, he was actually the first mastermind that I ever attended, and he's the reason why I started my podcast. So, honored to have him here. Uh, next is Steve Trang, Mr. Real Estate Disruptor himself. Uh, he has 10,000 followers for his podcast. He also has a sales training program, and uh, his legacy is he wants to create 100 millionaires across the country, and uh, he's well on his way to doing that. Uh, next, I've got Alex Pardo. Family Man First, um, he's the host of the Flip Empire podcast. And then he's also the co-founder co and the coach of Ascend. It's a, a mastermind and a coaching program for entrepreneurs who want a better life and business. Next, we got Mr. Chris Jeff Jefferson. How you doing, man? What's uh, going on? Out of Richmond, Virginia. Um, you know, I just had Chris on my podcast. He's been a prolific wholesaler. He averages about 70 deals per year, um, and he started in 2008 when, when everything was going to shit, so honored to have him on here. And then- we Going to crap. Our, Are we allowed to say shit? We, we've got our- Going to crap. This is on here. Um, <laughs> Jamie Woolley, Cassie DeHaas, and Ryan Robeson. Um, together, we're Next Level Mastermind. Uh, Jamie runs a wholesaling and flipping company down here in DFW. Cassie and I are partners at Titanium Investments. And then uh, Ryan, Ryan's the Phoenix man of the next level group. He uh, flips anywhere from 50 to 100 deals a year while also traveling 120 days a year to make all of us jealous. Not in this, on this environment. Yeah. And then uh, Quentin Flores isn't here yet, but he's going to join us in a second. And when I asked him to send me his uh, bio, I saved this one for last because this is what he sent me. Quentin Flores, the metalhead real estate junkie from San Antonio, Texas. People know him as Q, while others call him the Johnny Cash with a beard. Quentin has been investing in real estate for seven years, all while playing video games and shooting the shit on the internet. So <laughs> that's, that's the man coming later. That's his bio. So for y'all right. that don't know him, he runs the Wholesaling Houses Ground Zero group. Just had a massive event down in San Antonio, so we're honored to have him on here as, as well. So with that being said, guys, today's webinar, obviously, you know, we had our call last week and, and we're kind of just wanting to throw out some free content for everybody in regards to what's going on with the coronavirus and our marketplace right now. This week's call, we want to talk about marketing, what all we're doing to kind of change our businesses. What's up, Q? Hey, what's up, guys? So you, you missed your you missed your uh, your bio, but I read it word for word the way you sent it to me. <laughs> so uh, like, yeah, we, we want to talk about marketing and how we've changed our marketing plans and tactics right now since the coronavirus has kind of you know become a pandemic and changed all of our worlds, as well as dispositions either for flips or wholesales. So kind of want to just open it up to you guys. Um, and, and see, you know, what you guys are doing right now to change y'all's marketing plans. Yeah, I'll jump in first if you want, man. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so the, uh, the last seven to 10 days has absolutely been insane, uh, to say the least. Uh, we've been aggressively, you know, reevaluating our business model, looking at exactly what we're doing and what adjustments we want to make. I think the biggest ones have been 
Uh, we're doubling down on our cold calling. Cold calling has already been massive uh, for us uh, over the years. Uh, we're more aggressively cold calling. People are at home right now. Uh, we're getting a mixture of people that are either, uh, you know, uh, they have economic concerns and they're, they're aggressively looking at uh, trying to move a property or people who aren't sure what to make of things yet and they're really good quality follow-ups. Um, you know, so we've, uh, we, we're going more into our bad credit list, our bankruptcy list, things of that nature uh, that are really giving us uh, a demographic of people that we can help uh, that may be facing some financial issues here in the near future. Uh, and also not just focusing on an absentee list, you know, we're aggressively going after owner occupant list as well, because those people are also gonna be uh, impacted by what's going on. From a disposition side, uh, that's been uh, <laughs> that's been a that's been a, a thing. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, we we had a closing today. Uh, you know that uh, that buyer was supposed to close last Friday. Their private lender pulled out the financing. Very, you know, right at the last second, they had closing. So now they had to close it with their own personal cash, which thankfully they were able to do that. Um, our other deals are still going through. Uh, but what we've done is we've touched every buyer that we've got. Uh, we've touched every private lender. So all of my private lenders. I've directly reached out to them to discuss what I see going on with the market, what our cash positions is in terms of reserves, what we're able to do uh, with no rent coming in at all, you know, things of that nature. So we've had those conversations, not the easiest conversation, but you got to have it. Uh, you know, I believe in trying to set the right expectation. And then as far as our buyers, something that we're doing right now, and we're looking to do aggressively over the, the next couple of weeks or in the foreseeable future, rather, is we're aggressively tapping into our buyers list uh, and we're putting more energy and focus on building it. So for a long time, you know, buyers list wasn't the craziest thing in the world, but the simple fact that the market was so hot, you had a deal that was gonna sell. You know, we're transitioning into a time period of, uh, you wanna know who your buyer is. I can't hear you, Chris. Did we, yeah, we, lost, I think we lost Chris's audio Very there, good. buddy. Yeah, yeah Chris, if you can hear us, like it cut out at we're transitioning to, and then kind of like after that transitioning to. He's still talking. Let's just let him talk and someone else go. <laughs> Is anybody else? I don't think he can hear us. Right can you hear us, Chris? Dude, we actually look like the Brady Bunch. This is pretty dope. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody else cold calling right now, or were they cold calling prior to what happened a couple of weeks ago? We're still cold we calling. We haven't changed. We haven't changed a thing on our cold calling. Can you guys hear me now? I guess I must have went on mute. Yeah, we you did. You went on. You went off when you said we are transitioning to. If that helps you at all. Just to clarify, I can see who muted you, and Jamie muted you when you were talking. Ah, okay, I'm in the okay, car. Okay. There's no way I'm using my phone. Quit playing. Yeah, I got my hands here, but uh, I can't remember exactly where I was at. But we're transitioning our business, right? So uh, you know, we're focusing on making sure we're having conversations with our private lenders, setting proper expectations with them, what our cash position is, what we're able to do, what we're not able to do. Uh, with you know no income coming in at all from our rental portfolio. Uh, we've also reached out to all of our buyers, right? So we had a deal that closed today. That deal was supposed to close last Friday. Their private lender pulled out at the last second prior to closing. They had to close with their own cash, which thankfully they're able to do. So we're being, being in, intentional about reaching out to our buyers list, seeing who can close, who can't. Uh, we're talking to lenders in the market, lenders I use for my own personal business to see uh, what their lending criteria going forward is going to be. Uh, are they open to working with new borrowers in case we have buyers that need financing as well? Uh, and so we're just trying to be intentional about how we're doing business. And, um, you know, I think the market obviously has changed. I think business is still able to be done. I've got active properties that are flips on the market right now. I've gotten offers this week. I've gotten showings this week. Um, so I don't think the bottom has necessarily fallen out. I think it's just now is the time of adjustment to, uh, to, it's not going to be as easy as it was, right? So you can't just get any deal and throw it out there and think somebody's going to pick it up. You got to really evaluate deals right now. Have you uh, seen an increase in your contact rate on the cold calling? Yeah, so I might have got cut off when I said that. So we've, we've been doubling down on our cold calling uh, very aggressively. Uh, we now have eight people on the phones making phone calls. Um, and uh, our contact rates are going up. We're getting people that are either uh, aggressively looking to sell and we're leveraging the conversation about the economy in, in, in those phone calls or we're getting people that don't really know what to make of anything yet they're a little nervous a little frightened and so we're, we're pocketing those as quality follow-ups to hit 
on a weekly basis. Uh, we've pulled and we've gotten aggressive with, you know, our bankruptcy list, low credit list, uh, low income list, because those are the people that we're going to be able to really help uh, right now in this situation. And then also making sure that we're not just focused on the absentee. So now we're also making sure we're calling owner occupied list as well, because there's going to be a, a, a wave of people that are going to have to downsize. Uh, people are going to need to sell their home uh, to get to get liquid cash uh, so they can, you know, maneuver around with everything going on. I made a post on my Facebook today uh, that the, the, the unemployment rate or amount of unemployment filed, I believe, was 3.3 million last week, mm -hmm. which if anybody understands what that means is highly, highly significant um, and uh, pause for concern for sure. So now it's just time to be more intentional about everything that, that you're doing in your business. So Steve, you said you haven't made any changes in your marketing. Have you seen an uptick in your contact rates as far as cold calling? Yeah, so we've had way more quality conversations uh, with the same amount of effort. Um, but I would say that even though we've got more leads and more quality conversations, we have not necessarily seen that translate into more sales, more contracts. And we are trying to buy them deeper, right? So that could be the reason why we're not getting as many contracts. But uh, we're, we, this is a, an analysis we did, uh, Monday of last week, you know, we're saying like, Hey, things are getting kind of hairy. What are we going to do? Things go south. What are our options? And one of the things we were talking about was potentially cutting back on cold calling. But as of right now, we're still closing deals. Uh, you know, we're, we got one that's closing, you know, recording today. And so as long as we're still doing deals, there's no reason to cut back on the cold calling. Uh, but if revenue goes down for whatever reason, then that's the where we're going to cut because that's where we're most expensive. We, we run lean on purpose, right? I think, you know, you guys heard me say before, our profitability is 45%. You know, we want to be as lean as possible. And so if revenue dries up, then we're going to cut our biggest expense. And for our marketing, our biggest, biggest expense is cold calling. So Q, I know you do a lot of cold calling, right? Mm -hmm. We what have an the, office. What's it been like the past couple of weeks for you guys? So last week was a huge readjustment. We were still working from our office, so it was a little bit different. And this week, San Antonio just went under quarantine, so we're all from home now. Apparently, we're not essential. I'm like trying to create a shirt. It's going to say hashtag I'm essential across my chest, and that's going to be something that we're going to work out. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's you know, and, uh, it, it, I think that right now our cold call rate has never been higher because there's a huge amount of people that are home. And we've been hitting a lot of different types of lists, right? So uh, a couple of the lists that we've been hitting right now is low income. We actually were able to find a VA off of Fiverr that was able to hook us up with this list. So if you have a low income, it normally it means that within your household, you make under twenty dollars to $30,000, right? So we're targeting this list heavily because a lot of these guys that have that type of income are getting laid off of their jobs, right? And we're pairing it with other things like tax delinquency. We're doing a lot of data stacking right now to really narrow down our criteria. And it's been just like such a crazy like transformation. It's also helped me figure out who in my team is actually putting in work and who's just going at home. You know what I mean? Because a lot of people, you know, and you know, they'll, they'll take this time and say that this is my vacation, right? And, uh, you know, for us, the, the train, it keeps going no matter what. So we've spent a lot of time these last couple of weeks with our mentors and people that have gone through not just the 2008 crash, but even like the stock market crash of like the early nineties and then the late eighties and whatnot and different recessions. Right. So, I mean, uh, it's been amazing. And I feel like these things that we're going through right now, uh, it's definitely not what it was before. Cause but back then there was a pattern. This is like a huge epidemic that we're dealing with. And it's not more or less like a recession. It's just a giant, market correction that could possibly happen or maybe like a very long dead season and that's my opinion on that but business has been flowing we closed two houses in houston this week and uh, we have a couple of more in the pipeline we're still finding people that are selling their properties so we want to be able to provide them with that solution and rather than using fear as a tactic as a stem cell tactic when it comes to negotiation but more like this is what we're able to do. This is how we're able to operate. And this is what we can do to help you guys still sell your properties, knowing that we're in a market right now that is basically uncharted water. So um, it, it's really just been like a huge adjustment. Our cold calling rate has been amazingly high. Our text blast rate has been amazingly high. Our VM is off the charts right now. And it's better than I think it's ever been, especially because my office opens up at 9 a.m. And we basically do not stop until 5 p.m. with the exception of four people that stay till seven, right? 
normally those people that stay from five to seven, they have the highest rate and you'll notice the spike in calls that happen. So I don't know what you guys use, but we use call tools. So we are only able to check so many analytics, but from what I've seen right now, it's just been crazy. So, you know, definitely making the adjustment and going virtual and then utilizing tools like Zoom and uh, really narrowing down our criteria and stacking our data has been key, a uh, key fundamental factor in how we've been able to stay alive right now. But I'm pretty sure we just got one on contract today. We got another contract going out tomorrow for a property we're buying in Houston. And uh, we just closed on a few rehabs. So I'll probably talk more about that here in a minute because yeah. that's just wild too. We were not expecting any of this to happen. So, you know, but I'm, I'm interested in hearing what Don has to say. Yeah, Don, I, I know you, you were big in the direct mail a couple of years ago. Last time I interviewed you, I know I've interviewed you a couple of times. What are y'all doing right now? I can't you hear you, Don. Don. I muted myself. Yeah. Um, we're still doing direct mail. We're still, we're big in the fundamentals that we've always been practicing. Um, I am, you know, usually my marketing plan is out at least a quarter, if not more. And, and we're, you know, kind of doing a week by week right now. One of the things that I want to say here is, um, cause we're all in different parts of the country and like different things are happening in different parts of the country, right? Like California's on lockdown, uh, stay at home order for a week. Now they're talking about not lifting that until like April 12th or something crazy or, um, and it was supposed to be at the end of this month. And then LA is supposed to, they're talking, they told everybody basically today to go get all your essentials because they may quarantine the entire city. Mm. So, and then you have some areas where you guys are still just doing your thing, right? Like it's not that big of a deal or you literally just got quarantined like yesterday, right? So one of the things that I've noticed is <clears throat> marketing, like we did a, a, a direct mail drop uh, last week, last Monday, when they had announced the quarantine in our, the stay at home order in our area. And like it hit on Monday and they announced on Monday and the type of calls we're, we're getting, were basically like, we're not doing anything right now. Um, the quality call went down to, to just horrible. But then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday started to pick back up again, momentum as, as the news settled in. So I think what people need to understand is that as these things get announced in your market, because this news is going out changing day by day, you're going to see some impacts in your marketing or some of the things you're doing or in your buyers that if you just, if you don't panic and you give it a day or two, people start to kind of settle back in and the fear subsides. And that's, that's what we're seeing. We do, uh, we do, we're doing a tremendous amount of follow-up, you know, we're going through our system. We always did follow-up. We're just, we're hitting it even harder. We're doing our direct mail still. I'm just making my decisions week by week. We are cold calling, not like some of you guys who have cold callers. We are, our closures will cold call, you know, a few hours a day each. Um, we're still doing that. We're seeing some, some good results and good conversations ticking up there, but we're in the, like California's already kind of settled into the game too. So that's one of the reasons why I think, you know, we're seeing, we may be seeing something either worse than people that haven't got the stay at home yet or better than somebody's just getting it. So that's just my two cents on it. So Alex, you had a, a great idea last week that your whole team was stuffing envelopes of offers of people that had previously told you no. Have you got any callbacks or results? Yeah. Yet? So those went out on Sunday and we've received 11 calls out of 67 mailers. Um, so we took 67 appointments, the most recent ones. And what we did was a cover letter with my family picture at the bottom. It referenced coronavirus. It referenced the fact that, hey, we're here to serve. Even if we can't buy your property, we're here as a resource. And we genuinely mean that. And then it, it came attached with a one page offer. So we've gotten 11 calls. One looks like it could potentially turn into a deal. It's still very early because the call started coming in yesterday afternoon. Um, but we're focusing on low cost marketing strategies. We're still doing direct mail, but we've really tightened up our buy box. We're focusing on absentee out of state landlords for obvious reasons. Um, Adrian from my team somehow found the list of Airbnb owners. I don't know how he did it, but we're, we're going after Airbnb owners again for obvious reasons. Um, we're emailing our database of sellers and we're letting them know, Hey, look, we're here for you. We're still buying. If we can point you in the right direction, you know, here's our contact information. Feel free to reach out to us. Um, today, actually, we just launched a, a private Facebook group for all the other wholesalers in the area. It's local to South Florida. And so what we want to do is we want to be the hub because I believe now guys, and, and maybe I'm curious if you guys would agree or disagree with me. I believe now more than ever is the time to collaborate with people in your market. Um, we don't see them as competition. We see them as collaborative partners and uh, we've been actively texting, you know, the top wholesalers. Hey, if there's something you can't move, let us know. Typically that's not our model. We're not really much into co-wholesaling and marketing other people's deals, but 
times like these, I think you got to get creative. I think you got to work together. Um, you know, I think it was Tim Bratz that said a hundred percent or fifty percent of a watermelon is better than a hundred percent of a grape. You know, Boom. and that's kind of the mentality. That's kind of the approach that we're taking. Uh, we're starting a, a a Facebook group as well, and we're doing uh, Zooms. So every other week, week, we're doing a Zoom with other wholesalers here, and it's kind of like this. It's to network, it's to mastermind, and we think from that there's going to be opportunities to partner with people. Um, for anybody listening to this that maybe has a tight marketing budget, consider doing joint venture partnerships with marketing people. You know, so if, if you have people out there that have dollars, but maybe they don't have the resources you have, maybe they don't have the team. Um, we've done deals with people where they fund five, $10,000 worth of a marketing campaign. They'll get 25 to 30% of the deal. And because I have the team, I have the systems, the, the infrastructure, we'll handle basically everything from A to Z. Um, so those are just a few ideas. You know, we're still mailing, uh, but, uh, and we're still doing a lot of lead Sherpa, you know, although that's, we've seen a little bit of a drop off in that. I think there's some, there's some challenges coming down the pipe as far as text message marketing. Uh, and then the other thing that we're doing is we recently bought a list of people that are 65 years and older that live in a property 2000 plus square feet or bigger. Um, and in, in addition to that, you can even find uh, houses that are two story. So seniors that are living in a two story house. I think it was uh, Chris that talked about people needing to downsize. So, um, so th those are some of the things that we're doing from a marketing perspective. Well, I love that you brought up collaboration because I think we have representatives from the two best cities that collaborate better than anybody in the country. And that's Phoenix and San Antonio. Um, so I'd love Steve and, and Q to talk about that a little bit. I've seen, uh, Zoom calls with probably 20, 30 people in San Antonio getting together, just talking about what's going on there. And, and Steve, you know, it's, it's been well documented about y'all's Phoenix click that y'all have there and, and how well y'all collaborate together. So I'd love the two of y'all to kind of talk about that a little bit. Go for it, Steve. Yeah, uh, I would say that, you know, what you guys see right now with the Phoenix group, I mean, that started last year, right, at Max Maxwell's event. Because even though we all knew each other, we all hung out, it wasn't until, like, we spent, you know, uh, three days together uh, that, you know, that the bond had, uh, had really occurred. But one of the things I hear a lot of is, you know, they see on the outside looking in what we got and they wish they had it in their market. And every time I've heard that, I've always said, if you don't have it in your market, then go create it. There's nothing to stop you, right? If you have the heart to serve, um, you know, the heart of a servant, you got, you know, like a, you're like a teacher, you know, you want to help people. If you go out and lead it and you show it, you demonstrate it on social media, talk to people like Alex starting that Facebook group, people will follow and you'll attract the people that like it and you repel the people that don't like it. And that's great. That's what you want anyway for your life. You want to attract people that are like-minded. So, you know, I think going out talking about it, pushing it and demonstrating it. And I think that's the key. Uh, I think a lot of people say a lot of great things, you know, collaboration over competition, but do their actions always demonstrate it? You know, uh, when no one's looking, are their actions consistent with their words? So I think it's not just words. You have to, uh, you have to actually impl uh, implement it, execute it, and, and, and push others to do it. And I think that's, um, you know, on, on kind of an unrelated topic. You know, I think leadership uh, is the most valuable skill that you can have to run a business. There's all sorts of valuable skills. But I think leadership is the most valuable skill if you could be an entrepreneur, if you're going to be a business owner. And there's no way, better way to demonstrate leadership than to uh, be friend with, you know, be friends with your competition and working together. What are you guys doing, Q? I, I've seen a couple of posts about y'all's Zoom calls and collaborating and just talking about what's happening in the San Antonio market. What's that been like? Of, oh, man, it, it's been a huge blessing, man. So San Antonio is a very old place, right? Like I'm telling you, like uh, I once did a property in a very historic district here in San Antonio where the property was built in like 1840, bro. And I found a cannonball underneath the house. So, you know, if that means anything, the people have been investing in real estate for a very long time in San Antonio. So, uh, well, you know, uh, one of the things that I love about San Antonio is that we have a lot of guys that aren't on the interwebs of uh, social media. But, um, you know, because of social media and the light of things and the real estate events and the meetups and the groups and the uh, podcasts and the things that everybody's doing, you know, it, it's been crazy, you know, just like meeting with other individuals that you never really had the chance to, to seek out mentors, right? And that was a very important thing because 
I mean, I lived through the crash, you know, I, I, I wasn't in business during the crash. So I, I don't like speaking about it if I wasn't going through it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So, you know, but uh, if you have not been through it, and I'm pretty sure that almost 90% to 80% of the audience here has somewhat started their real estate business within the last five years, they, they probably haven't ever gone through it as well, right? So by building these communities and where people are going to meet up with one another and talk business, whether you're having a drink or you're discussing strategies or even just trading your number with someone else, it's been phenomenal to be able to seek out to people and not a competitive standpoint, but like that we're here to collaborate. And so building communities and, and honestly, I mean, I don't think right now has probably been the best time to start a community even if it's something that it's a bunch of newbies coming together, you know, that are, there's strength in numbers, right? So, I mean, uh, it's been amazing collaborating with some of the guys from Phoenix as well. And, you know, I've, I've been on uh, Steve Chang's podcast. He, he actually honored me by allowing me to, to share my story with people. But I mean, uh, you know, we basically mirrored exactly that. We don't have a podcast as badass as real estate disruptors, <laughs> but uh, we definitely have an awesome community and an awesome group of people that are willing to help each other. So, uh, you know, I've been able to connect with Chris. I've been able to, I finally messaged Don, you know, and uh, been able to connect with a couple of you guys here just to even just talk to you guys about uh, what's going on right now and how you can best uh, position yourself, right? It's about positioning. It's not about writing it through and dealing with it. It's about positioning yourself into a place where you know that you can come out on top and still win because these are unknown times right now, right? So it's, it's uh, this is something that my mentor told me. It's like, look, to the people that have been doing it before you because it was for you, okay? Right. So remember that, guys. And right now you're in a circle with a bunch of people. This is more of like, uh, you can ask us questions too than just watching us talk about it. But the community has been amazing. We shifted up, we, we shifted up, uh, we shifted our entire strategy uh, from just wholesaling to now acquiring properties more often than we used to. And uh, we just closed on two houses that we're gonna be starting rehab on. I actually just started rehab on today and another one tomorrow. So it's just crazy right now, but thank God for mentors. And I, mean, I just want to add, you know, we're talking about community. Uh, a don't start a physical community right now, uh, but B we've, we've got a great two weeks, right? uh, social, social responsibility, <laughs> uh, but we've got a great online community. So the next level mastermind, what the three of you guys have put together, you know, like there's some great questions in there. Uh, Cause I, I know, I know a lot of people that are watching this aren't necessarily in that community uh and in, in, in the next level mastermind uh facebook group but you know the conversations that we had even just ryan uh pinita what he was posting this more uh yesterday and commenting this morning you know those are conversations that you don't get to have if you're not collaborating working together like i i have to speak up on this but my lender that i have used lending home for three plus years paid them on time done i mean tons of properties with them out of nowhere they you know raised the rates which would have equated to about five thousand dollars per property so i had to talk with my team like listen we're gonna have to buy deeper until i can figure out what's going on with this lending situation and i happened to jump on next level and it was already being talked about because there's 25 35 percent of people in that group using lending home and two lenders were thrown out and immediately i had conversations with both yesterday i got the deal that i was already getting with lending home and they're like no problem i'll send you the paperwork we'll get you up and running in 24 hours that right there alone, I mean, imagine how much money, like I personally just saved from being in that group. Um, so to me, that's a really big deal. And I know Chris hit on this earlier, but I did want to like bring it back up. So I know people have got on the call and it may have just kind of, you know, uh, glimpsed over, but you know, dispositions is tougher right now. I think we can all agree on that matter. And he brought up something that's really important. Um, if you can find lenders in your area and you have a good local community, and reach out to those lenders and say, listen, you know, if we're getting some really solid deals and we've got buyers that, you know, have, have some they can bring to the table, but yet their lender is, you know, pulled the rug out from underneath them. You guys, these buyers don't necessarily have the networks that we have and know the people to call a lender to get, you know, ready within 24 hours like we can. And it's really important for you to do that due diligence on your own as a team and be able to put that, you know, in your email blast, in your text messages, when you're calling your lenders, like, hey, or your, you know, um, your flip buyers, like, listen, you know, don't worry about it. We've got somebody, you know, that can step in on behalf of whoever you were using. Um, I think that's a really key point. Just wanted to bring that up. Yeah, well, thank Steve, you, Jamie. Steve, Steve posted something. I don't remember exactly what you said, Steve, earlier, but it was something to the extent of, we're going to see a huge shift of wholesalers that 
that doing it the easy way out of the market, right? A lot of those guys are going to fall to the market. And I started in 09 where every house I bought was worth less the next day. And you got to get really creative in those markets on this post positioning properties and I think it's important that you know you guys that are listening you need to start getting your hands dirty and learn how to do some of these old methods it's not easy like you just send out an email and, and sell your properties these days like you got to get involved with your buyers help them get the property closed I mean we're going from like the easiest pendulum ever of selling a property to really hard to do it and you, we all just need to get those skills tightened up and be willing to jump in and get it done so yeah I, I, I yeah, want to triple it I want to triple down on that real quick, just so people understand, you know, uh, because Q made a really good point about how many people that are probably watching this started, you know, post 2013, 2014, 2015. Um, the, the business is back at a point of having to be a conduit between the seller and a closing, right? So you, you have to be extremely intentional about helping make sure these things come together. Uh, you have to reevaluate some of your pricing as it comes to conversations you've had with sellers. Prices that were the price last week are not the price this week, right? And so you have to be intentional about having that conversation, you know, with your sellers. You have to, you have to on the back end of these deals, dispositions was already tough, right? In, in general, because acquisitions, acquisitions and dispositions are two completely different businesses. Dispositions is key right now. You have to reach out to your buyers unless you have to talk to buyers in your market. You got to talk to hard money lenders in your market, even if you're not borrowing money. All right. You need to get on the phone with hard money lenders in your area and find out who is actively still lending so that you can get them partnered up with your buyers uh, when that's needed. Something that we've done over the years and, and we're going to continue to do even more now is when we send our deals out, we send the deal out and we put at the bottom re rehab financing available. Right. And so the reason that we do that is we have a structure set up with multiple lenders in town and we'll introduce our buyers uh, to some of our hard money lenders in town. And we've negotiated where we get a percentage or we get a point, sometimes more than a point, right, on that loan uh, on top of our wholesale fee. Right. So you just got to be very intentional right now of actually running this as a service business and not just like, you know, somebody just pointed out where you get something under contract, you throw out a, a, a email or a text blast and hope for things to all kind of fall together. You have to really kind of step out of that and, and, and really put a step forward in to making sure you're bringing everybody together. Your title process has to be tighter. Like all these things are extremely important right now. So, Chris, I, well, yeah. I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think everything you said, I will double, triple down on. And now's the time, you, we can't be lazy anymore in the disposition side. I told my team on our level 10 meeting on Monday, like we've been lazy on dispositions, like the days of sending out a couple of text messages to our top buyers and getting these things sold like that. I think those days are gone. Yep. Uh, matter of fact, we've, you know, to your point, Chris, we've been very intentional about having conversations with our top buyers. Half of them are on the sidelines right now, you know? And, and so the mistake we've made, and it's kind of a rookie mistake is that we should have always been continuing to work on building that buyers list. But we were coming from a time, you know, over the course of the last couple of years that it was just very easy to move deals, you know? We all now got comfortable. Think, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm, I'm guilty of the same thing. You, you said it best. We, we got comfortable. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. guilty of the same thing. But, but now I think we've really, it's obvious to everybody that we've, we're quickly switching if we haven't already switched from a seller's market to a buyer's market. And now's the time that I think we have to go above and beyond for these buyers, add value, things like what Chris suggested, you know, actively putting them in contact with lenders who are still in the game, doing things like that, that the days of just sending out an address on a wholesale price and then expecting it to be gone. Um, I think that's a recipe for disaster. So I yeah. want to just no. add like a, a point here because I do a lot of relations with um, uh, our JV partners and so when we're talking about, you know, the, the dispositions process, the acquisitions process, um, how we're doing our marketing, I think all of this comes back to play into how, why it is so important to collaborate. There are a lot of people out there, like Chris made that point very valid. We're very fortunate that when we started, we lived in a bubble until we went to Don's mastermind. Like we lived in a bubble. We did it all ourselves. We learned how to really work, um, uh, the seller side and the disposition side. So, you know, 
a lot of people that are in our market in DFW, even though we work in multiple markets, I find they really want to JV with us. I just walked somebody through, um, you know, on that, that was JVing with us on the acquisition side and we were working on the disposition side. You know, we turned up from, you know, a $5,000 deal to a, a $20,000 deal just because they wanted to collaborate just because we're pouring into that collaboration with people who may not be familiar. They did come into it already spoiled. They don't know how it works. So, um, you know, when you're, when you're joining in on these calls, when you're joining in online masterminds, when you're joining in, um, you know, even like directly reaching out to people, I think it's just so important that you learn from each other and you work together. And in the true sense of collaboration, like Steve mentioned, that you are going in this to um, win together, to learn together, that you're, that you're really having that giver mentality because I think that it gets you the 50% of the watermelon. I don't think that uh, people are as focused on making those pivots in their business to where, you know, they, they use the word collaboration, they use the word work together, uh, but they're, but they're just really looking at the, the dollars and cents and they're focused on the fear rather than what you can gain out of this. Um, because if you are like us, we, it, it wasn't that big. It's not that big on our disposition side to sit there and go, okay, we need to go back to the basics of where we started, where we were really, really, really creating relationships with our buyers on the wholesale side, where we were really, really creating relationships with our contractors, where we were really creating relationships. We have great relationships with our title companies and you're really working with other realtors, everybody else that you work with in this industry, including your competition, you know, this is where we all need to get back to not just being a service to the sellers, but really remembering that this is a relationship industry um, and you can do more together. So I, I yeah, I appreciate that, Cassie, because I actually, I wanted to segue to both you and Jamie, because I know that, we do a lot of JV deals. I know Jamie does a lot of JV deals. And from the from what I've heard so far, it sounds like, hey, acquisitions and the marketing side of things has been pretty status quo. Um, if anything, the response rate has gone a little bit higher, maybe not more deals because we're all trying to buy deeper right now. But where the main problem is, is dispositions. That's where we might see a, a hang up right now. And if you have not been lazy, even though all of us on here are admitting that we have gotten a little bit lazy over the past couple of years, if, if you know that you can dispo properties, you are immediately adding value to people that are out there acquiring properties that might be stuck with those. So Jamie, I kind of wanted to throw it to you. I know that you do a lot of JV deals. How are you approaching somebody and how are you getting people to come to you to bring you JV deals? And what does that conversation look like? Yeah. So, I mean, basically I think through the years, um, when I first learned how to, uh, to wholesale, that was, I think number one or two on my, on my list of the coaching program that I did, you know, it was like, you have to get cash buyers. I didn't know better. And I didn't, look at a hundred different things. So I kind of was very focused. And so I have over 55,000 people on my own. I've also gotten with three or four people um, in Dallas Fort Worth over the past few years. And we have like taken all of our lists and, you know, like added to one another's and things like that, which I think is that cool collaboration thing. Um, so, you know, we, we do have a really robust list, but when someone's approaching us with that, um, you know, it's, it's a very simple conversation. We even have some email templates and text templates back and forth because we do get approached with it often. And, you know, what we do is, you know, we, we need it for like five days and we're going to do our best to push it. We're going to be in communication with them. I think right now, um, and I keep hearing this across the board, I think everybody will agree, communication is key. Um, we, we are all human and the unknown, the unforeseen creates fear, which creates anxiety and stress and all kinds of other not fun emotions. So I think as long as we're communicating, you know, with the JV partner and allowing them to communicate with that seller, that that's probably the most thing that needs to be top of. 
is, uh, you know, the JV partnership, but they, you know, a lot of people come and they've only done two or three deals. Some people have done, done this for 10 years and they're like, listen, I'm really good at acquisitions. I want to keep going forward. I want you to sell this for me. So it just depends on who we're working with. And if it's someone we've done many JV deals with before, or it's our first one, kind of how that conversation goes. But again, the way that we set expectations with sellers, those same expectations need to be set with those JV partners. Like, listen, it's a little bit different right now. I'm not saying, you know, difficult. It's just a little different. So it may take us a day or two longer to move something um, than it normally would. But we will make sure to be in communication with you guys daily. Let you, little tactic that I used to do in the and again, I got lazy. Um, we used to put signs out um, around all of our houses. So between five and 10 signs, we have started that again. So we've got, you know, the signs that we have all pre-printed already anyhow, which you can use a marker or whatever. Home Depot is essential. So it's still open. You guys can go get your magic marker, the poster boards, the stakes, um, and put those signs around the houses. I think we all have heard that before, but we may have forgotten about it or it just you know, doesn't cross our mind, but we started doing that. And I think that has been really helpful because the buyers that are still in the market and the do have rentals in certain neighborhoods, they are more than likely going to drive by some of their rentals. Um, they are probably getting tired of being pent up and at least had to go to the grocery store. And so they're going to drive by some of their neighborhoods um, and talk to their tenants face to face even maybe. And so they'll see those signs. So that's just a, like a little tactic that I think we can all implement. It's cheap and it's something that can really help move a deal um, right now because the buyers that are actually buying, they usually those type of buyers are specific with certain areas and certain price points and things like that. So I want to ask an uncomfortable question for all of us here. Like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, when we acquired a property and we were going to wholesale it, right? We knew we could sell it for, I mean, we could squeeze every bit of juice out of that lemon, right? So a lot of us were selling 80, 78, 80% ARV minus repairs. In Phoenix, you know, Phoenix is insane. Y'all are selling them for like 90 cents minus repairs. Um, not that bad. Yeah, yeah, but bad. Maybe not all the wholesale, <laughs> some of them. <laughs> Where... What adjustments have we made on our dispositions as far as where we're trying to sell those properties at now? Because RJ, you, 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 took the, you took the thought right out of my head. I, I was going to add, aside from dispositions, I, I don't, and there might be some disagreement, which, which could be healthy and it could be an interesting conversation. But what I, my mentality and what I've told my team is on the disposition side, now is not the time to swing for the fences. Right. If anything, now is the time to get conservative and price your properties that so that they move quickly. Now's not the time to sit on inventory and try to squeeze out every dollar. Um, a mentor of mine years ago told me a quick nickel is better than a slow dime. Yep. And in this, in this market that it could be a falling knife. I think, I think you kind of have to guide that knife to the floor, so to speak. And, um, and you don't want to sit on inventory because that slow dime may never come. Nothing you know? so more I don't... important than cash flow right now. Right? Like we yeah. all need cash flow and revenue coming through our doors. So um, is, is anybody else kind of willing to, to pitch in there on, on kind of the, yeah. They so the prices? here's, so I, you know, I'm unfortunate again, you know, I get lots of great relationships and I've talked to some flippers and the, the, the dynamic has changed, right? Like when buyers are a dime a dozen, you can try to get 90%. It wasn't 90. Come on. It was only like 84, 95. but, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when buyers are a dime a dozen, you don't have to, uh, you can, you know, you can buy deep and you can sell it and get big margins. Right. And that's been the business model for the last three years. Uh, the, the dynamic has changed. Alex said earlier, it's a buyer's market now. And uh, a couple of flippers I've talked to are like, I have every intention of beating that wholesaler down to a $3,000 fee. Like you got, I'm the only one here. 90% of my competition is gone. Like we're switching roles here. Right. Right. And that wasn't one person, two people I've talked to, have that, uh, have that viewpoint. And I understand it because the flippers have been on the wrong end for the last few years, right? Like they've been waiting for this opportunity. So I think a couple of adjustments that, um, that we're looking at uh, for us personally. So I had someone reach out to me uh, a few days ago who is like, you know, been watching what I've been doing uh, for the last couple of years, someone I look up to. Uh, and he's like, look, I made it through 2008. I made it through 2001. I want to share with you what you need to do right now. 
Uh, and he's going to kind of coach me through this uh, uh, for this foreseeable future. Um, he hasn't laid out the roadmap yet, right? We're just, we're still kind of getting started talking about this. If you guys want to follow this journey, follow me on Instagram um, at steve.trang. But basically what, what's going to happen is we're going to have to be their best buyer sometimes, right? So we're still going to try to negotiate deep. You guys heard me say this. We're trying to buy it at 50, 55, 60, maybe 65 cents in the dollar. Like that's what we're trying to go in for on the purchase side. But for us, we can't rely on making 15,000 on a flipper anymore. That was, those days, they're not gone, but they're not as around as much as they were before. And so if we want to make those 15K assignment fees, what may actually be more like is making 15, 20 on a wholesale. And that's what I was doing uh, seven years ago uh, when Ryan and I were you know, talking a lot uh, more back then. We were doing wholesaling, right? We were buy it and we would just bring in a cleaner and list it on the MLS. And so for us, we're going to have to go raise more money for us to be able to take down more deals so we can buy our own deals. Maybe, we, you know, wholesale, we're not wholesaling as much as we were before, but also going back to the collaboration JV model, if we're able to take things down because we raised enough private money, then when someone says, I can't move this deal, hey, we're still here and we can buy it. So we can buy more deals from our own marketing and we can buy other wholesalers deals where they can't sell it. So that's our strategy. Uh, for the next, for the, you know, uh, to adjust to what's going on right now as far as the disposition side. And again, I don't blame the flippers. They've been on the wrong end. Right. They've been abused and abused for quite some time. <laughs> I, I was one of those flippers that was used and abused for a while. And, and, I'll, and I'll be honest, like, be, yeah, before I, before I became a wholesaler too, I was, you know, I was a rehabber. I went through 2008 and I lost everything and rebuilt. Everybody knows my story. And so I'm a conservative buyer. I will always have been. My numbers are my numbers. It's the box I live in and that's it. And I would always tell wholesalers, you know, I'm not the guy who's going to pay the most every time, but I'm the guy, I'm the guy that's going to always be here. And um, when I started wholesaling, you know, and I was drinking a little bit of the Kool-Aid and I was getting crazy numbers for the properties I was selling, I kind of got it. All right, well, you know, why am I going to sell to the guy, you know, over here for 20 when I can get 40 over here from somebody else that doesn't know what they're doing. So I get that it's all come full circle though. And that's, that's the thing, you know, there's, there's, I mean, ego gets out of check when markets are good because you can make any mistake in the world and still make money. And this is going to be the great equalizer. And I think it's just a matter, like everybody said, relationships are important. There's going to be those of us who are going to still be standing that they're going to know what we're buying and why we're buying it. And you got to make sure you're talking to us and finding out what that is on the buy side of things. You know, the reality is it's going to take a little while for sellers to catch up with what the market's doing. We're having those conversations right now. I think some of you guys are too, where they still think their property is worth what it was three weeks ago. So there's going to be challenges there. So I think it's just keeping your head up, you know, understanding that this is not about ego. It's about, it's about working hard and working together, making sure you're going back to the core values, your, your, your you know, your core competencies and building relationships. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of saying what everybody else has already been saying, but I want to reiterate, I've been in this game for 17 years, people. I lost everything last time around. I'm not going to make that mistake again. So Don, around. real quick, I want to ask you a specific question. We got a question from Omar and he says, if you're buying today to wholesale something, what discount should you put on the ARV? So let's just throw out a random number. Say the ARV was 200,000 according to the comps a couple of weeks ago. What are you calling the ARV today? Well, let, let me answer that broadly. You got to look at your market. So for instance, Fresno dropped about 25%, right? The last time we had a market correction. Vegas, what was Vegas? Like 50%? Who's in Vegas? I don't know. It was something insane. So um, Florida was one of those insane markets that dropped, you know, pretty heavily. I don't know what it was, but you really need to look I think at- Vegas was more than 50. Yeah. I would look at your market and see what the worst case scenario is and just kind of see where you're comfortable right now. In, in my market, I'm going to ask for a 10% discount on ARV. You know, I'm comfortable with that in, in my market. You know, in some other markets, you might want to get a little more aggressive in your discount because we really don't know. We could, there's two things I feel like that's going to happen with this. One is there's so much pent up demand and low interest rates that when basically this thing, the, the, they open the barn doors, right? This, the market's going to take off like crazy. And I'm going to look like a crazy person for saying the sky's falling. Or two, the fear that everybody's got jumbled up inside them is going to linger and it's this thing's going to fall a little bit. We just don't know how far. I think two is the most likely scenario. And so for me, I don't think it's going to be a 2008 crash necessarily, but man, I don't know. So right now, 10% I'm kind of comfortable with. Um, but I would look at your market and look what your market did in 2008 and find a number that you're comfortable with. 
So Chris, well, I, I had the opportunity to interview you on my podcast and you look like one of the smartest guys in the world right now because you started off wholesaling, then went to rehabbing, new development. Now you're back into wholesaling. So you, you hit all the right marks there. You look like the smartest guy in the world. What are you doing as far as calculating ARVs and determining where to actually buy? Because I think that's a big unknown right now, right? It's like, yeah, good price. I think this is, but we don't really know. So what are you doing? So let, let me give a couple overall thoughts. I, I appreciate the compliment, but you know, one thing I've prided myself on in the last 10 years is I've done a lot of different things, apartments, new constructions, flips, what have you. I've been very intentional about making sure I'm ahead of the curve, right? Um, everybody thought I was crazy and thought I was losing my mind in 2018 when I started parting off my, my fix and flip business, my new construction business, you know, selling off inventory, uh, selling off lots, things of that nature. Uh, I just knew that things were, had peaked out. The market had hit a spot uh, where it just wasn't supportive of going too much higher than that, right? Uh, we're looking at things on a day-to-day -day basis right now, uh, extremely like with a fine tube comb, um, you know, so, uh, my wholesale business, maybe the analogy is that it used to be Neiman Marcus, right? Today it's Walmart, right? So uh, it's, you know, to Alex and Steve's point, my business now is a, is a volume business. It's not a specialty business. Uh, you know, specialty before was that, you know, we could get you the deals in the neighborhoods that uh, were the hot neighborhoods at the right price that you wanted to be in. Uh, and we hit, you know, uh, doubles, triples, home runs on a lot of our deals. Our average deal uh, profit was a net of 19000 I don't see that to be the case going forward in the future. We're adjusting down against that. You know, one thing that I'll give everybody, I've done this over the years, uh, and I talk about it in my coaching group and stuff like that. Guys, you, you got to look at a wholesale fee. If you want to maximize the dollar of a wholesale fee, you got to understand how to be creative and how to make adjustments in your business. You know, so one thing that we've done, and we're going to start doing a lot more of this. So if we want to make a $10,000 wholesale fee, but the reality is, is that with everything going on, things of that nature, it's probably truthfully a five thousand dollar wholesale fee. What we'll do is we'll give a second on the extra five. All right. So we'll say, hey, look, you know what? Pay me seventy five dollars a month. I'll carry a second on the other five thousand. That'll give you some. You can use that towards your down payment or whatever the case might be. You know, be able to float yourself out for your first draw with your hard money, and you can pay me back my five once the property sells. You know, once you flip it or once you refinance it. Right. So I'm still, I'm happy with the five that I've already got, right? Because now I'm in a, uh, now I'm in a I'm Walmart, right? I'm not Neiman Marcus anymore. So the volume is important to me, all right? Uh, but I can also hedge my bet on getting another five in the future with some small residual income uh, for the next four, six, eight, 12 months, what have you. Uh, and then I still get my five on the back end, right? So if you do this properly, you can set up multiple scenarios where you have uh, $5,000 drops or 10000 whatever it is that you carry as a second, um, you can have that kind of drop, you know, on, on the back end in different places. It allows you to build a relationship uh, with your buyers, all right, uh, because you, you, you want to operate in their interest. So if your fee's $10,000, you can say, hey, look, I'll take a fee right now, three, I'll carry seven for you. That way I can make sure you can get into the deal. I know your hard money lender is making you bring more money to the table right now. You know, let me help you with that. Um, so when we talk about relationships, when we talk about uh, how to interact and work with your buyers, there's ways to go about it and be creative where you can kind of help yourself and, and still make more money in the long term. Uh, and, then, and then also hedge your bet and help your buyers right now. I'm still an active cash buyer. I've got properties that I own uh, and I've got properties that I'm buying or hoteling right now. You know, so in terms of ARV, um, we're looking at it in two ways. All right. So if we've got stuff that we've had. It's kind of in that iffy section, right, uh, where it's like, uh, you know, we were swinging for the fence or trying to hit a double. We're clearing the books on it. If I can make five grand or three grand, what have you, at this point, I'm perfectly fine with that. And I'm happy to get my lenders paid um, so that they understand that we're in a good position. Um, on the flip side of that, the new stuff that we're looking at, uh, we're discounting that ARV, uh, you know, for certain. But we're looking at that and it kind of more than 10%. You know, so we, we already buy deep. When I personally buy something as a company, we buy deep anyway. Um, so we're kind of hitting those with 15 and 20 percent right now. And then we're being intentional about being patient. And so what I mean by that is um, I'm more than comfortable to build up my follow up bucket right now and not stress or worry too much about having to do a deal right now. 
because we're going to go through a, a period of uh, two different things. One, buyers are sorry, sellers understanding uh, exactly what the actual price of their property is, right? Uh, but then number two, we don't truthfully know what's in front of us right now, right? And so when I say I'm taking it day by day, we're just looking at everything on a daily basis to determine what adjustments we need to make. It's like doing everything on the fly, right? It's like, you know, hey, look, we wanted to target $10,000 a deal before, now that's 3000 Hey, today that's 5000 But you got to actively be on top of your business. So I, I love that, Chris, and, and I'm going to make my partner, Ryan, really happy here because he, he asked me earlier this week, he said, hey, I don't want this to just be like a kumbaya and everybody agrees. So I'm going to disagree with all of y'all, okay? <laughs> so I think everybody keeps talking about, hey, now's the time to make like a five or 10000 you know, single on the assignment fee. I disagree. I think now's the time that we're going to get back to having much larger assignment fees. And here's the reason why. Up until two weeks ago, when I went on an appointment or I talked to a seller, I was one of many people that they were talking to. And I was competing against every single person in the world. And I really didn't have any leverage. Now I have all the leverage in the world. When I talk to a seller, I'm like, hey, the world's ending. Like, I don't know if you know that or not. Like, we're actually shut down and there's a worldwide pandemic going on. And you want to sell your house. So... Yeah, I mean, last week I could have offered you 150, but today I, the most I can offer you is 80, and this is the reason why. And I can go back to the historical data that Don's talking about, where it's like, hey, when this happened in the past, this is how much the house values fell. And I, I think that this could happen again. So it's my money, and this is the most I can offer you. And just to be quite frank, the reason why I'm saying that is because is I did it this morning. I mean, Cassie was telling me to offer 145 on the house. I went and looked at it and I said, I'm going to offer 125. Now, we're still going to sell it like we acquired it at 145, but we acquired it at 125. And the, the only reason why he said, is that the best you can do? And my response was, yes. Turn on the news. Do you see what's happening? You need to sell your house because of what's happening. Oh, by the way, that's the reason why you wanted to sell your house. So you own the house free and clear. Do you want to take the 125000 or not? And his answer was, yes, send me the contract right now. So plain devil's advocate there. That's why I feel like now is the time that I'm actually going to be able to make larger assignment fees than I could two weeks ago. Does anybody agree with that? Or am Well, I let me just say, I mean, I you think gotta, you're right, RJ. Well, but that's yeah. part of buying deeper, yep. right? That's where we yeah. need to buy it. We need to negotiate lower. That's the only way that's going to happen. Right. You got to wait for the sellers to catch up with that a little bit in some markets, right? And see, and, and that's going to be re-educating sellers and stuff like that. You got to be buying deeper. But again, you know, going to what Chris said and what I said last week, we don't truly know how this is going to flush out right now. The, the world has never shut down before. Right. That's right. And that, that's essentially what's happened right now. And we don't, this could be way worse than 2008. So I think just being, being real about what the possibilities are, it could be a situation where we're going to make a lot more money. We will make a lot more money. It's just a matter of when. When 2007, eight kind of hit, 2008, everything kind of stalled until about 2009 that it made sense to get in again. We had almost a year of our hands being tied. Is that going to be the same thing here? We don't know. So that's where getting real. And I just want to say with Chris's um, idea about carrying the second, I, I want to, that is gold and people need to be doing that. But I want to just share my experience in 2007 and 2006 and stuff. When the market started to kind of, because the market in California kind of started to peak in 2006, it kind of started to slow down around middle into 2006. And I started doing that. I wasn't wholesaling per se, but I was selling properties and people couldn't get finance for a certain amount. Say I was going to make like a hundred grand. I would finance 50 in a second. There were bigger deals than the five grand, right? But I would, I would finance portions of these deals in seconds thinking I was being smart and setting myself up for success. And um, that, that money ended up basically disappearing when the market really hit rock bottom. Um, people, you know, people were, um, you know, going into foreclosure, they were doing you know, all kinds of things were happening and that money just disappeared. So when you say hedge your bet, I just want to caution people that don't count that money and think it's going to be there for sure. It's a great practice to do. It's gold. You should be doing it. But if this thing all hits the fan, that money may, may go up into flames and you may never see it again. So it is definitely a hedge and it's definitely a smart thing to do, but just don't count your chickens before they hatch or something. Because I did and I thought I was going to have a couple hundred grand a year. <laughs> and I didn't get out of bed closing for me all the time and it just went, dis, it just disappeared. So that's my yeah, personal you, you experience. Gotta, 
Yeah, you got to look at that as bonus money uh, yeah. and assume that it's, that it's, it? that it's never going to come in. And, and to speak to Don's point about the market, I think we're in unprecedented territory personally. Um, you know, I, I don't have – people have asked me, like, my overall thought. I've talked to my coaching students about it. I'm not fearful about the situation. It just kind of is what it is. Um, I, I know that there's hidden treasure at the bottom of the ocean, right, to use that analogy, that pirate bounty that – you dream of when you look at the tre treasure map on the other side of that situation that's at the bottom of the ocean, right? Mm -hmm. The reality though is, is that we've just dipped our head under the water, yeah. right? So you can't even see the ocean floor yet. And so the reality is, is that you just got to see what's in front of you and work based on exactly what you can see and what you've got. We don't know what stimulus package is going to come out. We don't know the impact uh, that that'll have. All the data, I believe in data. I look at data every single day all the data that we can see right now shows that it's a bad situation, right? Uh, but there's money to be made uh, by far uh, inside of this. You just got to keep everything realistic uh, and not, and don't think that, you know, tomorrow you're going to wake up and figure out a, a, a way to make millions of dollars in the next 12 months. I don't know if that's really realistic right now, but being intentional about what you're doing and what you are learning uh, from people like on this panel uh, over the next 12 months, over the next 24 months, is going to prove to be very beneficial for you uh, in your businesses, for sure. I was uh, going to say that I think that that is, that is one of the most important key things. I think that we have to be ready to make adjustments at this time. Um, rather than sitting in fear, you have to be ready for anything. And the market like your buyers by staying chris you said it perfectly earlier staying in touch with your buy, buyers your private money with you know working with sellers you know i depending on the deal i'm going like well if this is going to take me three months uh, if this is going to take a flipper three months you know maybe we we do need to be looking at a 15 percent discount if I, as a realtor everything i'm listing right now is flying off of the market in dfw so like staying in touch with your market your buyers your sellers your private money lenders those things are just going to keep adjusting and adjusting and adjusting during these unprecedented times and so you just have to be ready to make those transitions um as they come and it might be every other day it might be weekly you know i'm thinking like right now you know just keeping it, uh your thumb on the pulse of it and that's one of the reasons why these types of um gatherings if you will internet gatherings webinars um with these with all of these panelists and all these different markets are are so important and you guys are starting to see um how much value they're bringing because you know, it is going to be a little bit different in everyone's market. Like Dawn said, you know, we're going under shelter in place at different times. You know, I don't know that DFW is going to be hit the same way that Fresno is going to be hit or LA, you know. So I think just really keeping a pulse and, and talking to each other is is absolutely vital. Well, Cassie, I think you brought up a great point right there. Staying in touch with your market, but what's the better, what's the best way to do that? is by constantly talking to realtors that are listing properties. I mean, you and I are blessed in the fact that you're a realtor and you're listing properties, you know, daily, weekly, whatever. And we're seeing what's happening with those. And yeah, as of today, everything's flying off the market, right? We yeah. list it and we give multiple offers full price and within a couple of days. Now, two weeks from now, we might be sitting here on this call going, holy shit, the bottom fell out, like everything's changed, you know, like it, it's not happening anymore. But and we'll, we'll as of right now, we're all to. good. Yeah, we're all those close to, sorry to make a jump, but that's that's another question is just because you're getting the offers right now, will will new lenders pull out? Will banks go and right. solve it? We don't know that. So, so and, and, Chris, I, yeah, I, so. Go ahead, Steve. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say, just to add to uh, RJ's point, right? Like you're saying that we can buy, we can get increase our wholesale fees, but I think if we have access to private money, Right. Because you got to look at everyone. Like if you were talking to uh, someone that had money in a stock market and you say, Hey, you know, I'm looking to, uh, I'm investing in real estate. Here's what my plan is. Here's what I'm going to do. And I'll, you know, if you can lend it, let's say 5%, they would have laughed their butts off a couple months ago. Now 5% sounds amazing compared to the near zero we've had for the last three and a half years. Right. Just one adjustment. It's going to change their mindset drastically. So I think that, uh, going back to you can increase the amount of money uh, per deal 
if you're well funded to be able to, to to do that. And again, you know, if you guys want to find out what I'm doing, you know, like I said, send me a message on, on Instagram. Let me know that you're interested in, in finding out as I learn uh, from my mentor. So I want to marry, thanks Steve for sharing that. I want to marry kind of something that I think Alex or Q talked about and then what Chris talked about. One of the best ways to market right now is to go after absentee landlords for obvious reasons, right? I mean, they, they're not going to be getting rent and all these kind of issues. They're scared about where the market's going. So I, I applied this on accident. I was trying to wholesale a deal. It was an absentee landlord and in this totally by accident, Chris. So I appreciate you sharing this. And I was trying to wholesale it to a buyer and the buyer said, there's no way I'm buying that thing since the governor said there's a four month eviction, stop all evictions. Like this tenants in there, how am I going to get them out? There's going to be a lot of properties that you guys come across where there's tenants in the property and you're trying to wholesale it. And what I did is I didn't want to lose the deal is he asked me if the seller would be willing to do a seller carry back and the seller wasn't to Don's point. He hadn't caught up on the fact that this market's changing so fast. So I'm stuck in the middle, like shit, I got to get this deal done. So I offered, Hey, let me take half my wholesale fee. I'll do a seller carry through my wholesale fee. And once that tenant gets out, you pay me that wholesale fee. Back. So I'll take part of that risk right now. I, I accidentally fell into that this week, but I think it marries kind of what Chris talked about and then what Alex is talking about, about marketing to these uh, kind of deals. And it's something we're going to deal with with all these eviction laws out there. Yeah. Yeah. I get, I'm telling you, getting creative, and I think that's one of the takeaways, you know, collaborating, but getting creative is hey, necessary. Alex, something's wrong with your audio there. Wiggle the wires or something. It's, it's yeah. how, about, how about now? Yeah, much better. Yeah. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, getting creative is uh, is critical right now. I mean, we're talking to a seller now about possibly even splitting the deal on their own house. You know, so like things that we wouldn't have considered of a month ago. You know, like every all cards are on the table. You know, do what do what you got to do. One of the things that we've done, I love Chris's idea about doing a seller carry back, is we've you know if we're not able to get a particular wholesale spread with a buyer, we'll say hey, we'll work out a certain percentage once they actually resell the property on the flip. So whether it's 5%, 10% of their profits. Um, so just think outside the box, get creative. Um, that's what we get paid for, to solve problems and to get creative now more than ever. I think that's critical. All right, guys. Well, we wanted to keep this right around an hour. Uh, but for everyone that's listening, hey, the panelists took an hour plus out of their day. I briefly went through their intros, so I wanted to save that for the end. I want to kind of throw it to each panelist, final thoughts, throw out any pitch for podcasts, masterminds, whatever it is that you have that you're promoting right now. Um, now's the time. And for everyone that's listening, please hang out and listen to this uh, because the panelists took their time out of their day to do this during unprecedented time. So Alex, why don't we start with you? Thank you, brother. Appreciate the opportunity. You know, I don't have anything to pitch. Yes, I, I along with uh, Steve Cavanaugh, I run a uh, hybrid coaching and mastermind program that is a combination of life and business. Um, but really, I'm here to help guys however I can. You know, four years ago when I launched the Flip Empire show, it was because I, I genuinely get so much fulfillment from helping people. And, um, and that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm here. So I don't have an agenda. I don't have anything to promote. Um, if you guys want to subscribe to the Flip Empire show, I think you'll get a lot of value out of it. Um, I share what works and I share what doesn't work. I share a lot of failures. I fail on a daily basis uh, and I learn a lot from it. And then I, I share that on the podcast. So um, I just appreciate the opportunity to come on here and kind of add my two cents. Um, I don't have all the answers. I, don't, I, I think everyone here would agree. We don't have all the answers and we're kind of figuring this out in real time, uh, but it's been real cool to see the community come together. So, um, and that's what I hope to accomplish through, through my podcast as well. So. Absolutely, brother. We we appreciate you taking the time and all the value that you add to the community. Mr. Costa. Man, Alex makes me look like the ShamWow guy if I pitch now. <laughs> 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 so, no, you know, actually, Alex and I started our podcast about the same time. It's funny because our colors are the same. And because and, and I started, what, you were about October 2016 or so. I know that's where I started. So um, it's been cool to watch your journey and everybody's journey here. I think community is important regardless of what community you're part of, whether it's next level online or you're wanting to meet in person with something like what Alex or I is doing, or, or I know Q's got something he's about ready to do. So I think it's important to be part of community. Steve Trang's always got some good things going on. Surround yourself with smart people. There's a lot of givers in this community. Pay attention to who you're getting advice from because there's some fools out there too. And I think it's important to, to really just get advice from a couple people and, and digest it, you know, and, and figure out what you feel is right. And 
reach out to me at any time. You can find me on Instagram at the real Don Costa. You can email, email me at Don at flip talk. Um, I, I will respond as quickly as I can. I'm always looking to help and, and lift people up as much as possible. So that's what I got. Thanks Don. And, and you know, Don and Steve are two of my favorite podcast hosts out there because Don's the reason why I got into podcasting and I'll never forget Steve because he always makes me look like the biggest jackass in my own internal mind because Steve, when he started his podcast, reached out to me and said, Hey, I've got this great idea for a podcast where people will fly out to me and it'll be in studio. What do you think as a fellow podcast host? And I said, that's the dumbest idea ever, dude. I can barely get people to show up on Zoom calls. What are you talking about? You're going to give them a flight of Phoenix? I was like, I remember telling Cassie, I was like, this guy named Steve had the dumbest idea. And now, well, we're just yeah. a real estate disruptor. So, Steve, yeah. the hey, platform's hey, RJ, yours. RJ, really quick, before Steve jumps in, if you guys want, I can type everyone's Instagram in the chat box just for. for Please do. Yeah, okay. Please awesome. do. Thank you. Right. Sorry, Don. What, what's your Instagram handle? At the real Don Costa. Okay, got you. Go ahead, Steven. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. So, you know, on <laughs> Archie's point, it's really well-timed comment. Uh, so someone canceled on me uh, for our show yesterday, and we're going to have some challenges the next few weeks uh, for my show. So because someone challenged on me, uh, Max Amanda is my business partner. Uh, he came on the show, and we just talked about our business, you know, and what we're doing to pivot uh, for, uh, for today's environment. So basically, we talked about how we're able to get the sellers to sell it to us at – uh, at a lower price, right? So, you know, how we're leveraging, uh, you know, the current environment without calling it heads on, without saying, aren't you worried about the coronavirus? But having a real conversation with a homeowner, explaining to them why your offer is this offer. And so the entire video is just, uh, it's, it's on, you know, um, real estate disruptors on YouTube. If you go watch the, the show from yesterday, we're going to show you exactly how our, our conversation has changed in the living room. It's an hour long, 50 minutes long, but how our conversation in the living room has changed. Cause that's something that, you know, with the sales training we do, what we're really passionate about is how to run that appointment, right? How to actually talk to the homeowner. And so we, uh, we just shared just a couple of tweaks we've done in our business so that we can buy it, you know, at least 10% lower. Our goal is 15% lower than what we've been buying it for. Hey awesome. Steve, I, I'm here in Phoenix with you. So if you need a backup, I'm, I'm ready to go for you, buddy. I appreciate that. The problem is the studio is shut down too. People coughing all over the place. Damn. All right, Ryan. Pitch yeah, we don't look so bad out of us. Yeah. Sell our shit. J Jamie committed to talk about us, so she's she's on. <laughs> that, that, yeah, I'll, I'll whole... talk about I'll talk about next level. Um, with, first of all, I do have arms, so everybody's like, you don't have arms. I know. I was just trying to do this cool thing that Alex taught me, um, but I guess I'm gonna have to figure out how to do it a little bit better. And I think I'm in the car, but anyhow, um, so, you know, first I do want to say that everybody on this panel, like, is giving their time, and I am so thankful for you guys, and we wouldn't bring anybody on unless we believe that they are an abundant mentality and have amazing core values. Everybody that's on this panel, like, does this business on a daily. We're in this grind with you guys. We're not thinking about it from five years ago. Uh, some have been through the crash, some haven't. But no one's main line of, in, you know, of income is any of these, you know, coaching programs or masterminds or any of that. We do this because we absolutely love giving back. And from someone who has totally done drugs in the past and that feeling you get that high, the only thing that is 20 times better is that high and that feeling of giving back. For me personally, that's just a me thing. So I love giving back. When I get a text message that says, wow, that video you put out or the way that you helped me through that contract, that's why everybody's on today. Um, that really is the reason everybody's on today because we wouldn't have them you know, on this call if they weren't. And I think that you can tell that from their abundant mentality, the podcast they do, everything. Um, so anybody on here is amazing. You should follow their Instagram. You should jump on their Facebook, their YouTube, their podcast, and just see who you resonate with, right? Like we all have different things that we bring to the table, but we all are doing it genuinely from our heart because I can promise you it is not by any means our main line of income um, at all. So next level, we created that because I'm a mom. I want to virtually be able to be with high-end investors at any point in time. And I've been in many masterminds. I love them all. And I have great relationships with every single one of them. Uh, but at the end of the day, and especially now, I think it holds true as, as we're all seeing, virtual is 
an amazing thing to add on to what you're currently doing. Or if you're an introvert and don't like to travel or you want to be at all of your son or daughter's games or recitals, that was the reason we created Next Level at a very small, minute price point, which is completely taken care of by your discounts that we offer. Um, so again, I just really want to put out there like this is because we want to give back and um, it means the world to us when one thing that we happen to say on a Zoom call or a podcast or you know, an Instagram a quote that lifted someone up someday. That's what drives everybody on this call. I can promise you a million percent. So, um, you know, everybody's amazing. You should uh, follow everyone. And we're going to continue to do these calls um, every week. And I don't know if that's going to be forever or every week for while we're going through this. I'm not sure. Uh, but again, we're only going to have people on that we, you know, know, uh, live and breathe abundant go-giver mentalities. And that's what we want to do. I think we've got a lot of people on here that show the community and, and that collaboration um, and, and is one of their number one priorities. And I think now more than ever, we need to realize that not just in these times, but in all times, the best thing for everybody is to collaborate. Um, we have amazing ideas and we should collaborate and, and join forces and just share and be abundant because at the end of the day, when you lay down at night, that's what makes your heart happy, you guys. And truthfully, I know it does. So you know, let's, let's keep, continue with that and definitely check out, you know, Next Level Mastermind and anything anybody else has uh, going today as well. Let me jump in real fast, RJ, just to that point for Jamie. She's not going to toot her own horn here, but, you know, her and I do these kind of calls in, and I guess you too, RJ and Cassie, within Next Level, these Zoom calls, these very high level Zoom calls. And when all this hit, we said, hey, let's start doing some calls in Next Level weekly to help our members. And it was Jamie's idea to say, you know what, let's, avoid let's let's kind of take this to a bigger level to the public's view and let's help out everybody and let's get the highest level people we have some of our competitors let's just all come together collaborate and and do this for the public so you know normally we charge for these type of calls but in this environment we're kind of putting money aside and saying what can we do just to help everybody right now and i want to kind of give applaud jamie for coming up with that idea all right mr jefferson stage is yours <laughs> Yeah, man, uh, I just want to shout out everybody on the panel. I uh, appreciate you having me on, RJ. Uh, I like what you guys are doing. Um, now, look, this, this going forward is going to take a community effort. Uh, the, the beautiful thing about this that's different from 2008, although we don't know what the horizon looks like and what have you, is that uh, there's a lot of building going on. There's a lot of synergy going on. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking to protect and work through issues in my business just like everybody else. Uh, so these, these webinars, uh, you know, Q and I have connected and, and talked a few times and we're working on different things. Uh, I've connected with a bunch of people around the country that we're working on stuff with. And, and most importantly, just having conversations uh, about, you know, what adjustments we're making, the different things that we're doing. If you're new in the business, take advantage of this. Uh, this, this is super important, man. I wish I had something like this when I first yeah. started my business. Take advantage of this. Jump on these free calls. Uh, send messages. My, my Instagram is in the chat already. Uh, the Chris Jefferson on Instagram. Shoot me a DM. I'll get back to you whenever I can. Uh, but now is the time to lean on uh, each other as a community and how we move forward uh, through, you know, whatever is coming uh, over the next couple of months, over the next 12 months, whatever the case might be. My encouragement to everybody is no matter how difficult the times get as we move forward with everything that's going on. Uh, what you have to keep in mind is the most important thing right now is to get to the other side of it, to get to the other side of it health-wise uh, and health-wise before your business, all right? Um, I've, I've talked to my team. I talked to my team yesterday. Uh, my The thing that's important to me uh, is not money. Um, I, I started with no money. I can go back to not having any money again, and I'll get it right back. That's not a stressor for me. Uh, what is a stressor for me is making sure that I'm healthy and get to the other side of the situation. It is a serious situation, the coronavirus, uh, to make sure my team gets to the other side of it, my family, their families. Uh, keep your mental sanity through this situation, uh, you know, and, and, and get to the other side of it. That's the important part right now. Be knowledgeable, learn, get the information that you need so that when you do get there, uh, you can fully take advantage of it and maximize the, uh, the opportunity. But none of that matters if you don't get there. So just, just stay on top of things, stay important. Take this stuff serious, man. That's coming up with the CDC uh, of sheltering in place, you know, washing your hands, uh, being protective of your environment. Please do that. 
uh, because the, the quicker we can work through this and, and get to the other side of things, the better it'll be for everybody. No matter what you encounter in the near future, make sure you just get to the other side. If you got some scrapes and bruises, that's all right. I know plenty of people that took a beating. Uh, Don said he took a beating in 2008 during the Great Recession. Uh, he looks happy and healthy these days. All right, so uh, it's not the end of the world. It's just money, all right? Uh, just stay focused, man, and, uh, and do everything you can to prosper. If you want to join my Facebook group, you're welcome to do so. Uh, Wholesaling Houses Supercharged. And uh, you can check out StartWholesalingHouses.com if you're looking to do your first deal. All right? Thank you, Chris. Guys, I, I hate to interrupt. I, I know we, we want to, like, make sure this whole thing goes around. But it's my son's birthday, so I really got to get off here in a second. Happy but, birthday. Uh, happy birthday. Thank you, guys. Yeah. He's four, man. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I really wanted to do this. I wanted to provide value. I wanted to serve you guys. I've hung out with pretty much almost everybody in this thing, except for the exception of uh, – Don and a couple of other guys on here, but you know, thank you guys. It's awesome to meet y'all. You know, uh, I'm a ton of fun, literally. So I like to, I like to make lighten up the mood a little bit because this is all serious stuff that's going on. And I've been dying to do this. So I really want our speakers uh, to cooperate with this. Okay. But I'm going to play this theme song and I just want to record this and it's going to be a Brady Bunch thing. Can you guys point to the person to your left and then look down and look up? Uh, real fast? Hey, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Okay, cool. Hold on. How can I tell? I've got to find my arm. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay. That was solid cute. That was cool. That was cool. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to do that real quick, and I'm going to post that, that all over social media. I so, thought uh, you, know, you were uh, gonna play like a hip hop song or something like getting us, you know, great, great yeah, game ready, hey. turtles. <laughs> so, guys, uh, for everybody that that's watching this right now, remember it's not the information that you receive; it's how you choose to retain it. You heard everything from private money on this podcast. You heard everything from you know uh, players that are actually doing the business, people that are doing flips still, that are purchasing properties still, that are rehabbing properties still. And this is something that I want you guys to understand, okay? We all have something unique to come to the business, right? And one of the things that we started off with with this, right, was about cold calling. So in my Facebook group, guys, if you join my Facebook group, Wholesaling Houses Ground Zero, we're going to be doing a cold call webinar next week on how you can cold call properties and use the COVID-19 situation to your benefit to be able to provide a solution to these sellers that could be on the, uh, you know, on, on the fence with not selling. You get what I'm saying? So this is a free webinar. If you're wanting to join this free webinar, this free session, the only way that you're going to have access to it is if you're in my Facebook group, Wholesaling Houses Ground Zero. We're going to basically break down how you can properly cold call some of these leads. But guys, remember this. It's about how you retain the information, not just what you heard. So uh, again, thank y'all so much for having me a part of this, guys. Don, everybody, Jamie, all you guys, it's amazing to see y'all. I got to get to my son's birthday right now. Love y'all. God bless y'all. Stay home. Stay safe. Q, some Iron Man goods are on the way. FedEx said two, <laughs> 10 days. Go, thank you, man. Go tell your son happy birthday. Thank happy you, birthday, little Q. Cassandra, do you have anything to say before we hop off here? Um, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time to just bring their value. I think that there's just so many uh, unique perspectives um, that come from unique experiences. I always say this, that, you know, that that is one of like my core values is to just kind of be prepared for anything, um, always be learning. And so I am so grateful that we live in 2020 when our world is facing something like this, that we are still able to come together. I think that um, all of you guys are amazing. And uh, like Steve said, I, I'm very grateful to be um, partners with um, and a person myself that attracts um, these people to to my circle and I, and I appreciate everybody who who's registered and 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 is joining this call as well um and I just want to I want to encourage all of us to just keep that going so final words thank you for everyone that attended we're going to make sure we email this out to everyone that registered so you have a copy of it you can go back and reference all of the great tips um for people that are listening that don't know who I am check out the titanium vault podcast Without that podcast, I would not be sitting here today with each of these amazing panelists. I wouldn't know Ryan. I wouldn't know Jamie. I wouldn't know Steve or Don or Alex or Chris or Q. So um, I'm super passionate about the power of putting yourself out there 
and and just that's what's enabled us to do this today and if you're sitting there and you're kind of on the fence of whether or not you should put yourself out there i challenge you to now is the time to start documenting your journey um, what a better time we don't know if this is going to be one of the craziest most historic events in our lifetimes what a better time to not start documenting your journey right now um, don't worry about creating it like gary v says just document what you're doing on a daily basis that's what all of us do and seemingly people like to hear it i can't believe it i don't feel like i live that that exciting of a life but people like to hear it so check out my podcast the titanium vault thank you for everybody that attended we'll see y'all next week